Hey everyone, in today's video, I'm gonna show you how to do something like this. So as you can imagine, when you're hearing something this harmonically complex, there's going to be more than one reharmonization technique going on, right? There's usually going to be several reharm techniques in conjunction with one another. This one video won't be long enough for me to show you all of those techniques, but I will show you one very big piece of the puzzle here that you can start using right away and reharmonizing your melodies right away and finding awesome colors and possibilities. I call it the vertical reharmonization system. Vertical because I'm thinking of it from the melody down. I'm reharmonizing from the melody down, vertically. So what do I mean by that? So let's take this same simple melody, right? The first two notes are C. I'm gonna decide that each melody note is going to be, say, a minor seventh in some chord. And then I'm gonna go note by note and find the chord in which each one of those notes is a minor seventh. And that's the chord I'm gonna to assign to the melody note. So starting with the note C. In which chord is this note a minor seventh? In D minor seven, the note C is a minor seventh. So, the next two notes are so. In which chord is the note G a minor seventh? Hmm, an A minor seventh. That's the chord in which G is a minor seventh. So we have. And I'm just deciding on a minor seventh just for this example. I could decide that each melody note is going to be a major seventh, and then we have different chords, right? Where I could decide that each melody note is going to be a ninth to something, or an eleventh to something, and then I would find the chords in which each note is eleventh or ninth or whatever I decide. But in this example, I decided that each melody note is going to be a minor seventh for the chords that I'm going to find. So so far, we found the chords in which the note C is a minor seventh. That's a D minor seventh chord. And we found the chord in which the note G is a minor seventh as well. The next chord we have is the next note, rather. Where is A a minor seventh? A is a minor seventh and B minor seventh chord. And G, we already know, is a minor seventh and A minor seven. So we have. Where is F a minor seventh? Uh, and G minor seventh. Where is E a minor seventh? And F sharp minor seventh. D is a minor seventh and E minor seventh. And C is a minor seventh and D minor seventh. Right? We just decided that each melody note is going to be a minor seventh in some chord. And then we find what chord that is. So. Cool. Now let's do the same example, and instead of making it a minor seventh, let's decide that each melody note is going to be a major seventh in some chord. So we start with... In which chord is C 
In which chord is the note C a major seventh? That's in D flat major seven. Right? That's the chord in which the note C is a major seven. And now we've decided we're gonna do major sevenths. So the note G is a major seven in A flat major seven. So So where is A a major seven? In B flat major seven. So where's F a major seven? In G flat major seven, so. Where's E a major seven? In F major seven. D is a major seven on E flat major seven. Now C is a major seven in D flat major seven. All right, you see what I'm doing here? I just decided that the melody note is going to be a major seven in whatever chord, and then I find the chords in which each one of these melody notes is the major seven that I decided it's going to be. So. That's with major seventh. And the one before we had each note be a minor seventh, right? So here's that one again. Now, if it sounds a little mechanical and not so musical, it's because it is, right? We're doing an exercise. The real fun begins when you start combining these tensions. Let's say the first two notes are gonna be a minor seven in some chord, and the third note is gonna be a major seven in some chord, right? And the next two we decided are gonna be a major seven, because now we're kind of mixing and matching these, right? And G is a major seven, A flat major seven. So now we have... Let's make the next two also a major seven. Let's make the next one a minor seven. Right? So... Well, now it starts to sound a little more like music because we're not confined to one option. We're mixing and matching these options based on our own musical taste. And that's just minor seven and major seven, right? Let's see what happens when we decide to make the melody notes be an 11th, for example, in some chord. So, like a minor note, like a minor 11th. So, in which chord is it? So, so in which chord is the note C a minor 11th? and G minor 11. Do, 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 do. In which chord is the note G, a minor 11th? Oh, and D minor 11th. So we have to, and then in which chord is the note A, a minor 11th, and E minor. Back to the previous one. And where's F a minor 11th? Where's E a minor 11th? And B minor. Where's D a minor 11th? And an A minor 11th chord. Where's C a minor 11th? And G minor 11th chord. So what do we get? Right? That's a pretty color. And again, it, it becomes musical and pretty when you don't just stick with one option. When you start mixing, like let's make this first melody note a major seven, let's make the next melody note a minor seven, let's make that next melody note a minor 11 in some chord, and then you start you know, finding the chords that correspond to whatever you decided to make the melody notes. I hope you're seeing the principle here, right? We could decide that every melody note is going to be a sharp 11. We could decide that every melody note is going to be a 9 in a major chord, and a 9 in a minor chord, or a flat 9. We could decide that the melody notes can be any tension or chord note or anything, and then just find the appropriate chords underneath each one of the notes, in which each one of those notes would be the degree that we decided it was going to be. So we tried minor 7, major 7, 
minor 11. So let's try all three now. I'm going to play the melody again and have some of the notes be minor 7th and chords, have some other notes be major 7th and chords, and have some other notes be 11th, because those are the ones we've covered so far. And that's just three options, and look how pretty this can actually sound with just these three. And we still have plenty others to explore. Minor 7... Pretty, right? This was just me deciding that, okay, this next note is going to be a minor seven. What chord is it the minor seven in? Okay, this note is going to be a major seven. What chord is this note a major seven in? This next chord is going to be 11. Okay, and which chord is this note in an 11? And so, and that's, I'm shuffling those three options here. So it could be also, uh, I don't know, let's do sharp 11 just to kind of give you an exaggerated example, right? So it's a little bit of an odd sound if you're going to use it all the time, but let's just try it. So, so in which chord is the note C a sharp 11? An F sharp major 7. Right? Where is G a sharp 11? And C sharp. Right? Or D flat one of those <laughs> I know one of them is right and one of them is wrong <laughs> so so we have where is a a sharp 11 and E flat major 7 where is G a sharp 11 and D flat major 7 F and and, and V E is a sharp 11 to B flat. D is a sharp 11 to A flat. C is a sharp 11 to G flat. Right? So you see what I'm doing? Again, I'm deciding on some tension. This Every melody note is going to be a 9 or a 7 or a minor 7 or a major 7 or a sharp 11 or a minor 11 or a flat 9. And then I'm finding the chords underneath each of these notes in which those notes are the 7 or the major 7 or whatever I decided it's going to be. So that's the method, right? And it really works, like I said before, not when you just stick with one, right? Everything's going to be a minor seven or everything's going to be a major seven. It really works when you start combining. Like the first two notes are going to be minor seven. Then the next note is going to be a major seven in the chord. Then the next note is going to be an 11 in some chord. And this way you get different colors all the time. And then it comes down to, you know, having it be a matter of taste, which combinations you prefer to mix and match. But the, the device is this device, right? You take a note, you decide what tension it's going to serve in a chord, and then you find the chord in which it serves that tension. So that's it, you guys. This is just one reharmonization technique, right? Like in that first example I played, there were plenty of more reharmonization techniques, and I'm going to cover all of them in future videos. But this is a big one I thought you guys should know right away. One thing I will say, you kind of need to have some cool chords under your fingers, right? Because if I say a minor 7 chord, right, I actually happen to have some cool minor 7 voicings under my fingers, so... That's also a big deal. If you just decide to play plain minor 7 voicings or plain major 7 voicings under these notes, they won't sound as beautiful and rich as like if you play some actually cool, nice, pretty, colorful voicings, which is the kind of voicings I you know, try to play as a piano player. So there's also that. One of the reasons it sounds so nice is not just the reharmonization technique, it's because I actually have some cool voicings under my fingers too. Which is why I did the screen capture, so you guys could grab those as well, if you feel like it, and use them as your own. That's about it, you guys. Let me know if you have any questions or comments and concerns. I answer every comment, and I'm going to be making more of these videos, as well as other music lessons and vlogs from my touring and ideas and music philosophy and creativity. If you like this kind of content, please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. If you're already a subscriber, please hit that notification bell so you can be notified every time I release a new video. Thank you, and I'll see you next time. Peace.